behold their pride and pity the lowest state of our nation and look upon the face of those that are sanctified unto thee this day. Then they comforted Echor and praised him greatly. And Osiris took him out of the assembly unto his house and made a feast to the elders. And they called on the power of Israel all that night for help, cried to the Most High all that night for help. The next day, Hall of Phoenix, chapter 7, commanded all his army and all his people were, which were come to take his part, that they should remove their camp against Bethulia, to take aforehand the, es the ascents of the hill country, and to make war against the children of Israel, and call all the people to come together to have war against us, the children of Israel. Then their strong men removed their camps in that day, and the army of the men of war was in 170,000 footmen, 170,000 footmen, and 12,000 horsemen. Wow, that's 182,000 beside the baggage. And the other men that were on foot among them, a very great multitude. And they camped in the valley near unto Bethu by the fountain, and they spread themselves in breath over the thyme, even to Balmion in the length from Balthua unto Cinema, which is over against Estralium, Estrella. Now the children of Israel, when they saw the multitude of them, were greatly troubled, and said every one to his neighbor, now will these men lick up the face of the earth, for neither the high mountains, nor the valleys, nor the hills are able to bear their weight. It's too many of them, they say. Then every man took up his weapons of war, and when they had kindled fires upon their towers, they remained and watched all that night. Got their weapons of war and watched all night. But in the second day, Alephanus brought forth all his horsemen in the sight of the children of Israel, which were in Bethuel, and viewed the passages up to the city, and came to the fountains of their waters, and took them, and set garrisons of men of war over them, and he himself removed toward his people. Then came unto him all the chief of the children of Esau, the Edomites, the so-called Caucasian, all the chief of the children of Esau. Listen to this carefully and all the governors of the people of Moab, and the captains of the seacoast and sailors, they said to him, let our power now hear a word that there be not an overthrow in thy army. Say, hear us so that your army won't be defeated by the Israelites, the children of Israel. For this people, of the children of Israel do not trust in their spears. They don't trust in their spears, but in the height of the mountains wherein they dwell. They trust in how far we are up on these mountains. Because it is not easy to come up to the tops of their mountains. It ain't easy to come up to the top of the mountains. Now therefore, my power, fight not against them in battle array and there shall not so much as one man of thy people perish. So I said, these nations are against us. Remain in thy camp and keep all the men of thine army. So just remain still and you're gonna keep all the men of the army. And let thy servants get into their hands the fountain of water, which issues forth of the foot of the mountain we had the water was at the bottom of the mountain that supplied the water for us that was on top of the water. For all the inhabitants of the Thule have their water vents. That's where they have their water. They get their water from. So shall thirst kill them, and they shall give up their city. And we and our people shall go up to the tops of the mountains that are near, and will camp upon them to watch that none go out of that city, of the city. So he cut off their water supply, that's what you tell them. Esau and Moab and Ammon always hung together. 
But you see what they tell him. They, he ready to go to war to be defeated. Well, here come Esau and telling him, hey, cut off the water supply. Then they'll die. And you have to lose a man. So they and their wives and their children shall be consumed with famine. And before the sword come against them, they shall be overthrown in the streets where they dwell. Thus shall I render them an evil reward, because they rebelled and met not thy person peacefully. And these words pleased Holophenes and all his servants, and he appointed to do as they had spoken. So the camp of the children of Ammon departed, and with them five thousand of the Assyrians, and they pitched in the valley and took the waters and the fountains of the waters of the children of Israel. They stopped from being able to come down to get the water. Then the children of Esau went up with the children of Ammon and camped in the hill country over against Dothan. And they sent some of them toward the south and toward the east over against Echribel, which is near unto Shusi. That is upon the brook Moshmer. And the rest of the army of the Syrians camped in the plain and covered the face of the whole land. And their tents and carriages were pitched to a great, a very great multitude. Then the children of Israel cried unto the Most High their power, because their heart failed. For all their enemies had come, passed them round about, they surrounded them. And there was no way to escape out from among them. Thus all the company of Ashur remained about them, both their footmen, chariots, and horsemen, forty, four and forty days, forty-four days, so that all their vessels of water failed, all the inhabitants of the two. And the cisterns were empty, and they had not, no, they had not water to drink. They were filled for one day. They had enough water for one day. For well, they gave them drink by measure. A little bit at a time. Therefore, their young children were out of heart, and their women and young men fainted from thirst and fell down in the streets of the city and by the passages of the gates. There was no longer any strength in them. And all the people assembled to Osiris and to the chief of the city, both young men and women and children cry with a loud voice and say before all the elders, so the elders were at the gates. Most I be judged between us and you, for ye have done us great injury in that ye have not required peace of the children of Ashur. For now we have no help, but the Most High have sold us into their hands, that we should be thrown down before them with thirst and great destruction. Now therefore call them unto you and deliver the whole city for a spoil to the people of Holofrenius and to all his army. For it is better for us to be made a spoil unto them than to die for thirst. For we will be his servants that our souls may live and not see the death of our infants before our eyes, nor our wives, nor our children to die. We take the witness against you, the heaven and the earth, and our power, the power of our fathers, which punishes us according to our sins and the sins of our fathers, that he do not according as we have said this day. Then there was great weeping with one consent in the midst of the assembly, they started crying. And they cried unto the most high power with a loud voice, then said Osiris, to them. Brethren, be of good courage. Let us yet endure five days, in the which space the most high our power may turn his mercy toward us, for he will not forsake us utterly. And if these days pass, and there come no help unto us, I will do according to your word. Say, give us five days. If it don't happen, most I don't deliver us. I'll do according to your word. And he dispersed the people 
everyone to his own charge. And he dispersed the people, everyone to his own charge. And they went unto the walls and the towers of their city and sent, and sent the women and children into their houses. And they were very low, brought in the city. So this is the story of Judah. Since you got all on here, only have 10 minutes left. We'll get to the point. Judah 9 chapter 10. Judah fell upon her face and put ashes upon her head and uncovered the sackcloth wherewith she was clothed and about the time that the incense of the evening was offered in Jerusalem in the house of the Most High, Judah cried with a loud voice and said, O Most High Power of our Father, Simeon, to whom thou gavest the sword to take bridges to the strangers, who loosed the girdle of a maid to defile her, our sister Dinah. They raped him. He raped him, one of them, and discovered the thigh to her shame polluted her virginity to her reproach, to her disgrace. But thou said, it shall not be so. And yet they did so. Wherefore thou gave it their rulers to be slain, so that they died their bed and blood, being deceived, and smote at the service with their lords, and the lords upon their thrones, and hath given their wives for a prey, and their daughters to be captives and all their spoils to be divided among their dear children, which were moved with thy zeal, and abhorred the pollution of their blood, and called upon them, and called upon thee for aid, O most high of my power. Bear me also a widow. Hear me also a widow, so lucky. And in the end, Judah took the head of our enemy. So beautiful. So I'm at the end right now. But you can continue to read on these chapters. You'll see about Judah, how this great general was taken down, and we got the victory over our enemies. Our Lord Yah, Most High Power.